just this drone orchestra. And again, Bitbox sort of is the foundation. It's the thing that grounds everything. So that's just on a loop. And if I toggle it, I can just turn it off. So that's in the key of A, uh, A major, A minor, A6, whatever, all versions of it. Uh, I like also to play with like major and minor anticipation so that, you know, is it sad? Is it triumphant? I don't know, nobody knows. The percussion is there, I kind of experimented it. I had that because I felt that, I felt that it was important for me to get away from the beat making, which is, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just not good at it. This, I, I know, like when I hear a loop, I, I like it, it's, it's, re, it's repeats, but it's not repetitive. It feels cinematic. And you know, once you like start to add these kinds of elements, it starts to become pretty cinematic. The thing that's problematic with these cinematic scores, a lot like, I guess, beat making, they all start to sound the same, right? And so how do I instill in my unique voice? How do I make it so that this isn't some generic, you know, like pseudo version of one of those big film guys? It's just that it's just done way poorly, you know, because I don't have the resource or the production skills to be able to do that. Well, if you add your own unique signature to it, it can stand on its own and you're not imitating anyone. So my idea for this was to add the deduk. So this is the deduk like, like I played before, right? Just me. And I'm sorry if you guys are any professional Duduk players. Uh, I'm probably absolutely butchering this performance. <laughs> but um, I had so much fun with it. It is such a difficult instrument to play. So anyway, what if I were to add, you know, bring this in. And it's loaded on the nebula. Now this is my performance. This is a unique, and this is just ripping on the key. So for me, uh, I love this because this is my unique sound. Nothing sounds quite like this. If you were to put this in a film soundtrack, I feel like it could maybe stand on its own because I recorded this thing myself. Even though it's terrible, it's its own sound. The Duke is a, a, an Armenian instrument, so it's got a tremendous amount of history, uh, a lot of sadness. Uh, let me speed it up. Why don't we slow it down? The cool thing about the Nebula is you can start to perform these. All the modular, like CV points, these can all be modulated. Um, I found that that uh, in itself would have been like taking too long, but you get the idea you could have, you could attenuate this using an LFO or any kind of thing, but see that? So that single sample, that singular sample, which is very boring. Oh, it's totally out of key or out of tune. <laughs> but the point is, um, the point is that when it's in the nebula, it becomes like a, like a malleable instrument where you can, You know, sometimes it's musical, sometimes it's not, but it's just, that's the fun of it, right? Um, let me... Let me make it so it's not so repetitive. All right, let's bring in the arbor this time. So, I think I have the cello on this. Nope, not the cello. I want to save the flutes, uh, a flute ostinato for the morphogene. I don't want that to repeat like that. And increase the size a little bit so it doesn't repeat so much. All right. Uh, where's my cello? Oh, I think it's layer two. There it goes.
<laughs> that the Duke is so hilarious. It's such a unique sound. It's not quite an oboe. It's not. It's got a very nasally sound, but it's really low register, so it's very um, musical. Okay, I like that phrase a little bit. The one it's when it's got that fake vibrato I was trying to uh, emulate. Um, all right, let's bring in the uh, the mortgaging. Okay. All right, morphogen. Man, let me just kill this. Let me kill this. Let me kill this. <laughs> so, anytime you mess with the uh, the pitch, it starts to sound like a horror soundtrack. Again, the original sound being. You know, interesting ways uh, to kind of play with all these different samples uh, in a very musical way that's like super tactile. Again, that's where modular shines so much. And when you're working with samples, uh, you've got to try to put it into one of these uh, modules because there's you, you start to see such opportunities, such interesting variations and permutations. I've also loaded a few other uh, ostinatos into the morphogen, and again, the, there's a uh, the, the, the organized uh, variation will sift through uh, the, the various different granular snips that I've uh, tracked into the morphogen. Because morphogen is just like this one long track, as opposed to the arva, which is more like visually speaking, like again, I mentioned, like a sandwich. Um, but for illustration purposes, and then let me bring it. Bring it in the flute for the arbo, uh, from the arbo. And play with the pitch a little bit. And this is just like some. Uh, Flute performance, and this wasn't even me actually. Uh, this was a sample. I did record some flute uh, tracks into it, but because I was so focusing on the Duke, I wanted to just kind of quickly track some of this stuff in. But again, what an unusual like tone. I mean, sound design wise, um, I found that that when I play with the pitch to my pitch too much, you kind of like lose your center. So I try not to do that, but uh, again, Morphogene kind of shines with those kinds of things. So I kind of, I think Morph I've, I've sort of assigned Morphogene as like the, like the special effect section, you know? Uh, so I could go on forever here, but um, that's just a small taste of what you could do once you have all those thematic materials uh, that you've generated from the computer or your recording and you can kind of load them up into the bitbox and then start to like record them and propagate them throughout your modular rack and become like just absolute rabbit hole of insane opportunities ideas and um, just the most exhilarating kind of creative experience I've had in such a long time We've got the bit box here, which is going to trigger all of the samples. Uh, let me play these for you a little bit. That's the orchestral drone. It's a little um, Moog bass kind of thing. A little string solo. A little violin ostinatos. So those are a lot of fun. The horns. It's my flute playing. 
a little augmented fifth stuff and then uh, a couple of new things here which i wanted to add this little little percussion thing as a way to kind of like replace the the typical uh i would say you know beat making uh, dance kind of thing i wanted to make it more orchestral and acoustic so this uh, these are taiko drums Okay, so what did I do? Well, Bitbox is really useful because I use that as a, as a way to bridge the computer uh, and bring the samples into the Bitbox. And then from the Bitbox, I can propagate those samples all across my modular setup. So essentially, I've taken some of the sounds and put them on the stars of the show, which is the Qubits Nebula, in Struo's Arbar and uh, Make Noises Morphogene. Morphogene, uh, Arbar, and Qubit's Nebula, I think, represent the sort of the flagship granular synthesizer modules out there on the market today. They uh, are, they typically are the most expensive, anywhere from seven to eight hundred dollars sometimes. And they offer a lot of features incredible uh, sample length and uh, sound quality. So uh, some of the things that I found that were similar and also the differences, but Morphogene I think is really great I want to say it's very modular friendly and CV uh, friendly because right out of the gate it almost kind of looks like a like a maths version or a granular synthesizer version of maths uh, and every one of these points are very much have hard dedicated knobs to attenuate each incoming cv so i want to say if you have granular synthesizer kind of thing that you want immediate top level cv points the Morphogene definitely wins amongst the three. This is the flute sample. Funny enough, uh, just to tell you, the, that is actually this. So, right, because the Morphogene here is being played uh, inversely as one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, slices. And I'll get to that uh, just a bit. Again, these are these modules are so complex and there's so many things you can do. I can only cover so much. And also just, I've only explored things that I like to do. So obviously you guys experiment on your own time and do the crazy things. From this to, right, that's what you can get. It's almost like granular synthesizers uh, in modular format allows me to treat acoustic samples in a way that is really malleable, that you can really get a lot of control. Because again, the concept of granular synthesis is simple. It's just slicing up pieces of audio and blending them, reversing it, pitch shifting it in a really musical way. And so most of the problems with samples is that it's a it's a long loop or it's a snapshot and it's not very malleable it's it's stuck in time it's like a it's it's not you can't control it but with granular synthesis you get you know it's not like a sine wave but you get tremendous amount of control over the sample and thus many cv opportunities and cv points so that's what that's why i think granular synthesizers it attracts me so much where does the Instruo Arbar uh, uh, excel? Well, um, you know, this whole concept of the, what I called before, granular synthesizer sandwich, because you can take a clip and layer seven different clips of similar lengths and then you can sort of morph in between them. So you get these, these really interesting, unusual results, unexpected results. Again, you can hear, right? That's the, that's the flute. Now, 
That's the original sample from Bitbox. And then you're hearing that on the R bar. And so what is R bar good for? Like the ability to go from one section to another section, right? Those are the two keys that I'm in. It's, uh, I think it's like an A, A major sixth or A major six. Now, I don't want to bore you guys with a bunch of theory, but you can hear. So I want to be able to modulate between those two keys on top of it. And then I also have this cello. I can hold that, that note and then resolve it when I want to. It's not a pure sample where it's like, you know, you're playing a sample library. It has its own unique taste because of the way grand note synthesizers work. And so I want to be able to hold it and modulate whenever I want to. And it's almost like a resolution, but I have full control over that, right? So that's really musical to me. Onto the Nebula. So the Nebula, I've loaded this pretty cool sample here. I'm a wooden player, so anytime I do these kinds of patches, I want to add something interesting. I wanted to add this instrument called the Daduk into a granular synthesizer mode. So let me play that for you. Let me play for the original, original performance here. So here, that's me playing. <laughs> uh, it's very flat, actually. So I had to go into the sample and I had to raise the pitch. Uh, that's another thing for you. When you start to, when you start to record your own instruments to these things, you find yourself out being out of tune. So you gotta, um, you know, dial it down. But it's not perfect, which is kind of awesome because that also adds to the charm. The fact that they're kind of slightly out of tune. I mean, I'm a pretty good. I have pretty good ears. I have a good sense of intonation. So even as I was playing, I was trying to like bring it up the pitch. So within the performance, the pit, the relative pitch is good. So when I did sort of uh, uh, bring it up by 30 cents or so, it seems to be in tune, but I wanted to have the Nebula play that, you know, You see the little orange thing? That's not a special mod or anything. That's just a USB disc. And it's like some fancy USB stick that I've got and it glows different LED colors. But so with this, I wanted to have it as a single instrument that I load up and be able to perform. The thing that Nebula like shines the most and that is different is that it's sort of your straight up granular synthesizer like there aren't any tricks it's kind of like clouds or maybe beads on steroids nebula is extremely powerful it sounds really great it can take huge file samples and you can scroll through them by pressing the file knob it kind of is like the most straight up you know vanilla super powerful granular synthesizer so everything like i understand like start time start time is where where in the sample it's going to play. Size is how long that size is. And then uh, density is how many, how often it's going to repeat. And overlap is the crossface between those granular instances. But it's so cool to see the way these instrument makers uh, kind of take their own spin on it, you know? So super interesting. And again, what that does is for me, kind of gives me opportunities to use each one of these granular synthesizers as kind of like its own instrument instrument, you know? <laughs> 